So if you recall from part 7 on lipids, we talked about plasmologins as being glycerophospholipids with ether linkages. And that ether linkage is, is shown here in, in place, basically, of an ester linkage, which is normally there because of an acyl group, which is the case, actually, at carbon number 2 here. Um, but plasmologins have an ether linkage at carbon number 1 of the glycerol backbone. And they also have, they are also, another characteristic they have is they have the first two carbons of the R group attached at carbon number one. Those two carbons have a double bond between them. They have a desaturation there. Uh, in addition, otherwise, um, actually, the plasmologen is essentially a glycerophospholipid where X is some alcohol that's attached there as part of the polar head group. Now the question might be, okay, plasmologens, they are glycerophospholipids, but they are slightly different because of these two reasons. The question is, how does each of these things get there? How does that ether linkage get there? How does that degree of unsaturation get there? How does that happen? So let's investigate it. First thing that happens is we're going to have dihydroxyacetone phosphate, which is basically going to be the glycerol backbone. We're going to take that and we're going to join it to uh, an acyl-CoA. And this acyl-CoA has these little asterisks next to it. And the reason why is because it's associated with this question up here. Is the identity of this acyl-CoA important in determining the identity of the end product plasmologen? That's something that we can't know right now. We have to go through, look at the pathway, and once we're done, come back and see whether or not this particular acyl-CoA was important or not. But until then, we'll, um, we'll just go through the pathway. All right, so dHaps three carbons are going to be the glycerol backbone, essentially. So we take it, we join it with this acyl-CoA, and what happens is that the coenzyme A portion falls off, and we connect that acyl group to carbon number one of the dihydroxyacetone phosphate, which gives us one acyl dihydroxyacetone three phosphate. One acyl, because there's an acyl group with the one carbon, dihydroxyacetone uh, coming from DHAP, and the three phosphate, there's a phosphate on carbon number three. Now, aside from that, we have another acyl-CoA, and uh, what we're going to do with this acyl-CoA is we're going to turn it into an alcohol. So in order for that to happen, two things have to occur. First thing we have to do is get rid of the coenzyme A. Um, it's not the first thing that we have to do, but in the process, we have to consider that we're losing that coenzyme A. In addition, we're turning this carbonyl here into uh, an OH, an alcohol, a hydroxyl group. So that was a reduction reaction. And the reducing agent that's going to be used there is NADPH. So NADPH is oxidized to NADP+, while the carbonyl, the carbon here specifically, the carbonyl carbon is reduced uh, to having a hydroxyl group. And I labeled this other carbon over here as the alpha carbon just so that can, it can help us track these carbons um, so we can see exactly what's going on here. Now, question over here is why NADPH? Just because we're talking about biosynthesis, so reductive biosynthesis makes sense. Okay. Moving on. Next thing that happens is that we're going to take this 1-acyl dihydroxyacetone 3-phosphate and connect it with this alcohol. In fact, precisely what we're going to do is this, this acyl group here will be displaced by this alcohol portion. Okay. So what happens here is these, these two things come together. This acyl group comes off as a fatty acid. And we end up having that that uh, chain there replace this this uh, acyl group. So now at carbon number one, we have that acyl group there, or excuse me, that alkyl group there, um, which actually changes the name of this molecule. And now we actually have this ether linkage. So we have this ether linkage here, whereas before we had. Right, this portion here, which is the ester linkage. So the ester linkage is basically replaced with an ether linkage. That is accomplished by the enzyme 1 alkyl dihydroxyacetone 3 phosphate synthase, named for the, the product of the reaction. So once we have that, we have that alkyl group at carbon number 1. Uh, what's going to happen is that we're going to convert this molecule to this, this molecule over here. And the difference between these two, this, this new molecule is 1-alkyl glycerol 3-phosphate. The difference between these two is basically at carbon number 2. 
uh, carbon 1 and 3, they're the same. Carbon 2, there's an alcohol instead of a carbonyl, so that's a reduction. And the enzyme that catalyzes this reaction is one alkyl dihydroxyacetone 3-phosphate reductase, named for the fact that it's acting on this one alkyl dihydroxyacetone 3-phosphate. That is a mouthful, goodness gracious. Okay. And the reducing agent here for this reductase is NADPH again. Okay, so that gives us this alcohol. So one alkyl glycerol, three phosphate. Now, from one alcohol glycerol, three phosphate, we get one alkyl two acyl glycerol, three phosphate. So the difference here is that we now have at carbon two an acyl group. So where's that acyl group coming from? It's it's coming from the reaction that is catalyzed by one alkyl glycerol three phosphate acyl transferase. And where is this enzyme getting the acyl group? Well, acyl transferases, we've seen them before in the previous videos. We get them from acyl CoAs. So we have an acyl CoA come in here, and a coenzyme A will fall off, giving us this molecule here. It's now one alkyl. There's an alkyl group at the one carbon. There's a, a two acyl or 2-acyl glycerol, two a, the 2-carbon has the acyl group there, and of course the 3-phosphate. So, next up, we're going to take that and basically have some alcohol here. This X is some chain, some, some alkyl chain, or some sort of chain of an alcohol whose hydroxyl group is right here. And this is going to be added such that it's uh, attached to the phosphate portion to give you the polar head group. And so that is head group attachment. Once we have this, we're nearly done. We nearly have our plasmologen. The only thing that we need still is to have the degree of unsaturation here between these first two carbons of the alkyl portion on carbon number one of the glycerol backbone. And so in order to give our final product, this plasmologen here, we have a mixed function oxidase, a mixed function oxidase act on this. And the mixed function oxidase requires NADH as well as molecular oxygen, which will be converted into water to give us this final product, this our plasmologen. Now, what I want to do is go back to that question that we asked earlier about that acyl-CoA, this green one, this green acyl-CoA. Is the identity of this acyl-CoA important in determining the identity of the end product plasmologen? Well, this is a, the green one, right? What happened to it in our product? Is it in our product? No, it's not there. We lost it. We actually lost it in the step here when these two components came together and the alcohol displaced it. So that acyl group is gone as a fatty acid. So the identity of this plasmologen is dependent only on the brown, the brown acyl group, acyl CoA that we came from, and the blue acyl CoA that we came from, labeled R2 and R3. So this one was important in determining the overall structure and identity, and so was this acyl-CoA. But this guy was actually not important because it ended up just leaving right here. Anyway, I hope that video was helpful in trying to understand plasmologen synthesis. Thank you for watching.